GST series on basic English communication skills for non-academic staff. I would like to welcome you all. My name is Hani Suraya Binti Aziz and I shall be your guide for today. Alright, for today, we are going to cover a few topics on introduction, how you can better yourself at communicating in English at the workplace, and we're going to do several activities, for example, tongue twisters, and I'm going to cover a bit on intonation. Okay, so without further ado, let's start. First things first. Before I can properly guide you on how you can actually make use of using basic English communication skills at the workplace, let's talk about something that probably you might not look forward to. And that is, of course, let's discuss or let's talk about your previous experience using English at the workplace or lack thereof. Okay, so let's say you actually have to deal or you actually have to communicate with an international student. Now, do you experience the following when you actually have to communicate with them in English? Did your, uh, did your palms sweat? Did your hands shake? Or suddenly your mind went blank? Or you, you, know, you don't know what to say or you don't know what to do and worse comes to worse, you actually ran away from even facing the student at all, okay? So these are actually normal symptoms that you might experience and I actually have actually seen these kind of symptoms happening in front of my eyes when some non-academic staff actually have to deal with international students, okay? And the symptoms that I mentioned previously, you know, your mind went blank, okay, you tried to run away, your palms uh, became sweaty, right? Your hands starts to shake about, okay? Those are totally normal symptoms, okay? Totally normal symptoms. Why do I say it is normal, okay? Partly because, of course, uh, English is not our mother tongue. It is not our first language. So we don't use it as much as our first language. So for us to actually feel all of those uh, symptoms are totally, they are totally normal. Okay, so how can you avoid doing all of that? How can you avoid experiencing all of those symptoms? Very easy. You actually have to practice a lot. As the saying goes, practice makes perfect. All right. So I'm going to share with you a few tips or a few activities on how you can actually communicate better, but we're going to do it a bit, um, what should I say, slowly, okay, step by step. So that's the best way for me to actually share with you on how you can better yourself at communicating in English at the workplace. All right, so all of the previous symptoms I mentioned are also signs of you being nervous, right? So I'm sure that when you are nervous, you will show all of the symptoms that I mentioned, okay? Sweaty palms, hand shaking, your mind went blank, partly because you are nervous. Now let's talk about among the top reasons why we are nervous when we have to communicate in English, okay? So number one will be you fear that people might judge you, right? So you have this thought that people will judge how you communicate, how well you use the language. You fear that people will judge your grammar usage. So all of that plays into your mind and then when that thought overcome everything, that's when you feel nervous and when you feel nervous, you will show all of the symptoms or all of the signs that you are nervous, okay? Number two, low proficiency, right? So low proficiency here can affect how we communicate, how we communicate, right? So sometimes, okay, um, being a low proficient user, it doesn't mean that it can hinder the um, receiver of the message to understand us. Because remember here, okay, fluency is not the same as accuracy. So fluency here is whether or not you can speak with confidence. So 
you can set aside in terms of the accuracy, for example, grammar. Okay, you need to build your confidence first, right? Number three will be past experiences or past failures, okay? This can be a bit more personal. Different people have different past or previous experience that might affect the way they communicate or the way they use English, okay? Um, on a daily basis or maybe when communicating, right? For example, you don't actually have a pleasant experience using English um, or pleasant experience learning English, okay? When you are in primary school or when you are in secondary school. So because of your previous experience, it can actually affect how you use or how confident you are when using the language in, in the present time. Okay, right. Uh, those are the top three reasons why people are nervous when having to communicate in English. Okay. Now I'm talking about the situation whereby English is of course not our first language. Okay, and we don't use it as often. Okay, so um, in the following parts, okay, I'm going to share with you, okay, on how you can build a bit of that confidence. Okay, I'm going to pinpoint areas that I think can make you a better communicator, things that we can improve on, okay, on how we can become better, better and more confident speaker when we actually have to communicate in English. So hopefully that when a, an international student come to the office, okay, they want to deal with you, you don't run away, okay? <laughs> All right. Okay, so let's move on to the first activity. Right, so now one of the ways of measuring one's level of fluency will be pronunciation. So what is pronunciation? So pronunciation will be how words are supposed to be said, how words are supposed to be pronounced, how you're supposed to pronounce the word that is spelled as TH. Okay, do you pronounce it as T or you pronounce it as THE? THE, okay? So we're going to build up on how you can improve on your pronunciation okay now a word a meaning of a word can be completely changed um, by the wrong pronunciation okay you pronounce the word a certain way it can mean something else in english okay probably not in malay but in english okay when when you mispronounce a certain word it can totally mean a different thing so you have to be careful on how you pronounce certain words okay for example, this is a, among the common mistakes that I normally observe, okay, for, you know, um, when my students, okay, were trying to, you know, uh, use or pronounce certain words, okay, all right? So, for example, okay, the word three, the number three, okay, T-H-R-E-E -E, is supposedly pronounced as three, okay, but it is commonly pronounced as three, okay? All right, three, okay, which of course means something else, okay, right. For example, the word throw, okay, throw, right, some of you pronounce it as throw, okay, so those are mispronounced English words, okay, when you mispronounce them, sometimes it can lead to misunderstanding and sometimes it can lead to uh, people not being able to actually get what you're trying to say okay so it's very important for you to learn how to pronounce certain words how to properly pronounce certain words all right so i can suggest one activity that you can do or maybe let's say a game that you can play in order to improve not only on your pronunciation but also your fluency and that will be tongue twisters Okay, so tongue twisters is actually a list of sentences or phrases that have uh, similar uh, spelling, okay, or maybe it has similar sounds, okay, and you have to pronounce them as quickly as possible, okay, but in order for you to actually uh, learn, okay, maybe you can pronounce them slowly, you can say them slowly at first and then as you gain more confidence maybe you can actually you know say them faster and faster and faster and faster okay let me give you an example okay i scream okay 
you scream we all scream for ice cream okay i scream you scream we all scream for ice cream okay so you get to see that okay the word scream the word ice screams pretty much sound the same but they mean totally different okay they have different meanings okay uh pretty similar um pronunciation okay and it can actually trick you okay and the sentence make total sense okay let's try another one okay she sells seashells by the seashore okay get it she sells seashells by the seashore okay now the fun with tongue twisters is that you have to say them out loud and you have to say them as quickly as possible without uh you know without flinching or without twisting your tongue okay all right so let's say we take the second example okay let's do it okay as fast as possible she sells seashells by the seashore she sells seashells by the seashore <laughs> okay so it it helps you to actually um you know train your you know your tongue muscles okay and it actually help you with how you can pronounce the words as um accurate as possible okay another example i can give will be um a cheap sheep is cheaper than a cheap ship okay <laughs> you get it okay a cheap sheep is cheaper than a cheap ship okay so that can be confusing isn't it but the sentence make total sense and the fun is where you actually have to pronounce them or you have to say them as fast as possible okay so tongue twisters is a very very fun way for you to actually build your fluency in terms of pronouncing certain words correctly right so previously i actually have talked about uh, building your fluency and building your confidence okay so when we talk about fluency even though we prioritize okay we put that first okay but we can't also forget about accuracy so accuracy here is whereby you don't forget about the grammatical element of the sentence okay so we might actually have to familiarize ourselves with the rules of grammar okay um i want to share okay a few commonly um incorrect language expressions that malaysians love to use okay they are commonly used but at the same time they are not grammatically correct they are grammatically incorrect but they are commonly used so i want to share with you so that you guys know which is the correct expression to use right for example okay the expression that means okay commonly people pronounce or people say it as that's mean okay that's mean which is totally incorrect they mean totally different thing so the correct expression will be that means okay for example that means you are not allowed to bring any calculator inside the examination hall okay that means so that is the correct way of using that expression okay another uh, commonly um another common mistake that people love to make is when they want to agree with someone they normally say oh i'm agree with what you say i'm agree with your opinion that is incorrect the correct way if you want to express uh, your agreement okay, you can just simply say i agree not i'm agree okay it should be i agree okay i agree with what you have said just now i totally agree with your opinion okay right uh another common one would be i'm not understand okay i'm not understand incorrect okay so instead of that please change it to i do not understand okay i do not understand okay 
I do not understand what you have said previously. Okay, so uh, those are among the common one. Another one that I think, um, yes, okay, uh, another common mistake that people love to actually use. Okay, another common uh, expression that people love to use that is incorrect will be uh, the word boring. Okay, all right, so normally you would say, I'm so boring. Okay, when you want to express boredom, okay, that is incorrect. Okay, you should say, okay, I am so bored, not I am so boring. When you say I am so boring, it's referring to you, the person who is actually is boring to other people. Okay, but if you want to express your boredom, then you should actually say, I am so bored. Okay, all right. So those are among common mistakes that people actually use. So we are not going to forget the accuracy as well. Fluency is, of course, uh, is being prioritized here in this context. But let's not also forget about the grammatical element along the way. So when you are more familiar with how you're supposed to use certain expression, okay, you are also going to gain more confidence and you're going to gain more fluency at the same time. But not also forgetting your accuracy. So, when you speak, you do not only use a single tone. You would vary your voice to convey or to show different meaning and emotion. And this pattern is what is known as intonation, like what I'm doing right now, okay? I don't actually have a monotonous voice. For example, today we are going to talk about how you can build your confidence level. So, that is being monotonous. But if you can see, my intonation is going up and down. Okay, so intonation is about how you say things rather than what you say. Okay, rather than what you say. Now, there are two basic uh, intonation patterns in English. We have falling intonation and we have rising intonation. So, let's go through them one by one. Now, the first type is falling intonation. So, it begins fairly high uh, and it descends on each stress syllable okay with the fall on the last main stress syllable it can be confusing okay um, you can use them when you want to make a statement for example the results will be out today okay you get to see the end of my sentence okay has a falling intonation the results will be out today okay uh, or you can use it when you are giving a command for example send the report quickly you get to see that there's a fallen intonation there send the report quickly okay or when you want to ask a question or especially a wh questions uh, for example why are you late to work today why are you late to work today okay or when you're expecting the other person to agree with you for example do you like my idea Okay, you get to see there's a falling intonation, okay, on the last syllable, okay? Do you like my idea? Okay, so that is falling intonation. All right, so the second type of intonation is rising intonation. So, rising intonation is the opposite of falling intonation, okay? So, rising intonation at the last syllable, okay, you actually would, you would actually raise your tone, okay, instead of decreasing them you would raise them okay uh, and you can use them in certain situation for example if you want to reassure the other person that you're speaking to okay for example you can say i think so i think so okay so the the, the last syllable which is so okay i raise up my tone so that the person would understand okay my intention what is my intention okay i want to reassure okay um about something i want to reassure the listener, the listener about something so i use that tone the intonation okay um another example whereby you can use um rising intonation is when you are unsure when you're unsure of yourself okay um you can say for example uh she's from Johor Bahru, i think okay Right? When you are not sure of yourself, you can actually use rising intonation. Okay? I think. Okay? 
she's from Joho Baru, I think. I think, okay, so you actually raise your tone so that, okay, um, the listener would know that you are not sure, okay. Um, another example whereby you can use a raising in the rising intonation is when you are not expecting the listener, um, when you're expecting the listener or the other person to actually agree with your opinion, okay. Uh, for example, you can say, you like it, don't you? Okay, you like it, don't you? Okay, so you actually want the other person to actually agree with what you're trying to say. Okay, so you ask them, okay, in a way, and you write, you raise, sorry, you raise your, your, your tone so that the person actually get the signal that, hey, maybe this person actually want to actually, uh, want me to agree with, with their opinion, right? So, yes, having a falling and a rising intonation will give the other person okay um signals and they were they, they are able to actually understand your intention what is your intention why do you uh, raise your tone why do you lower your tone so different tones actually would mean different things so sometimes you also have to be careful to not um, use them incorrectly Okay, so having the correct intonation will definitely build up your fluency, okay, so that you become more confident when communicating with, okay, someone, especially in the workplace, okay, so that you don't get misunderstanding, okay, and, you know, you don't get the other person to actually get confused, and by the end of the day, they are able to actually understand what you are trying to say to them, and therefore, it will create a more successful communication and more effective as well <laughs> okay all right so i think um this is the end of part one all right so we have reached the end of part one okay in part two we will cover everything that has to do with conversing with confidence how can you Build your confidence when you are having a conversation with another speaker. And how can you build that confidence when having to communicate in English? So we're going to do this step by step, okay? Starting with how should you actually begin a conversation, okay? How should you control the conversation? And how should you end the conversation, okay? So hopefully, uh, whatever it is that I shared in part one can be benefited okay and you can actually gain more confidence when speaking or when communicating when you're communicating um you know with others okay and i'll get to see you guys again in part two okay so see you thank you very much for watching bye